Bry's Comics. Welcome to Bry's Comics. We're taking a little road trip today. We're going from Paradise, California to Santa Rosa, about a three hour drive. So take a look at this collection, 346 slabs, 17 long boxes. And I'll tell you some more details about the, uh, the collection here in just a sec. But before we hop too far into it, make sure you're following me over on Whatnot if you're interested in any of the slabs in this video. There's a link down in the description. If you sign up for Whatnot for the first time using that link, you'll get $15 towards your first purchase. And I'll always have items available for sale for 15 bucks so you can stop by and pick up a free book also uh, if you subscribe to the channel comment on this video and like this video you're entered to win a free slab this month we're giving away this awesome uh, war machine book and if you head over to bryscomics.com and sign up for the newsletter over there you're entered to win this awesome venom clayton crane signature series slab this month and that's also where you get first access to new collections and mystery boxes and all kinds of fun stuff at bryscomics.com also we have the those two new exclusives, a few copies left. Uh, at the time of filming this, we had about 35 copies left of the World Tree number one, limited to 100. And uh, we also have some copies of Something Skill and the Children 21, full foil version available now at brisecomics.com. That one's limited to 75 uh, graded copies. Both of those exclusives are gonna be individually numbered by CGC. So an exciting offering there. Lastly, follow me on Instagram if you're interested in trades for grails. I have a bunch of new grails that have been listed uh, and I'm going to be listing on Instagram. Um, so if you're interested in consolidating your collection to one mega grail, make sure you're following me over there on Instagram and have a list ready to go of slabs that you have available for trade. So this collection, a uh, phone call came in from the gentleman and I could tell immediately from the first conversation that it was going to work out. And after doing this for a few years now, uh, almost without fail, after that first conversation, I know whether or not the collection is going to come to fruition. So this guy was really cool guy, uh, super reasonable, uh, and um, I knew we were going to make some magic happen. He said there was 346 slabs and 17 long boxes of raw books, and uh, he, he sent me some pictures of the slabs. We talked about the raw books. I remember him saying that he, from our conversation about the raw books, all I remember is that it was decent stuff in there. Um, and so he said, you know, do you want to shoot me an offer? And I thought, man, you know, the only way I can shoot you an offer at this point without knowing what the 346 slabs are, the only way I could do that would be to like totally lowball you uh, to be safe. Because I don't know if it's complete junk. I know that you sent me some pictures of some really good stuff, but what does the other 300 look like? Um, so I said, you know, there's no other way to do this. You're just going to have to send me a list. He said, no problem. He got the list over to me and I started looking up values and you know I'm currently offering 60% of fair market value for slabs um, it's 60% of fair market value as well for raws but the valuing of raws is very different if you're gonna look up you know 17 long boxes of raw books you can't put the fair market value of each one at you know three dollars um, because of the amount of time that goes into selling raw books so raw books are just a little bit different but um, so we started with the slabs and I got about halfway through the slabs I looked up about 200 of the slabs or so and got an average price I think it was somewhere around $75 fair market value for the slabs at that point I know that it came out to $45 after the 60% off okay so I might be a little bit off on my numbers here but um, it's pretty darn close so I said hey I'm getting about $45 after the after the 40% off you know I, I pay 60% I'm getting about $45 per slab um, there's 346 slabs that comes to $15,500 uh, you know I'd like to offer you 15,500 for the slabs and he said that sounds totally fair um, I'll do that and he said how about a hundred dollars a box for the long boxes there's 17 long boxes so seventeen hundred dollars for the 17 long boxes and I remember thinking uh, yeah sure like at this point when you said that like all I remember about the raw books is that they were decent right I actually have no idea what's in there I think it's decent bronze age stuff but when you shot that number of 100 bucks a long box out I thought how can I argue with that I mean if it's even halfway decent stuff you know I'll be all right at a hundred dollars long box which is actually you know if you talk to some other dealers, that's not like a crazy price for a long box of books. That's like kind of about standard for the dealer price. Like if you were to walk into an LCS with uh, some 
you know, I, I don't know what's in there. So it really does depend on what's in there. If it's absolute 90s junk, like straight garbage, $100 a long box is way too much. Like that could be too much, but I know that's not what's in here. Um, also, if it's like Silver Age books, $100 a long box is way too low. So it really does depend on exactly what's in there, um, but it'll be kind of fun. I figured it's gonna add a little element of fun to this thing. I'm heading there anyways to pick up the slabs. Um, so why not, you know, just pick those up for a hundred bucks a piece, get some cool content out of maybe doing like some mystery unveilings of, of what's actually in the boxes. Um, and so we agreed on a full price of, I think it came out to $17,000. Um, and we're gonna head to Santa Rosa and pick up a U-Haul in Santa Rosa, go to the house, pick up the collection, go back to the shop, unload the U-Haul, and then drop off the U-Haul. And I should be able to do it all um, today, you know, before dinner time. So uh, super excited and we'll see you guys when we get there. So I just picked up the trailer from U-Haul and the chick behind the counter was something else. As soon as I walked in, she's the only one there. I could tell she was just overworked and underpaid. She was just not having it. And uh, she was super busy. And when I got up to the counter, I was like, wow, it looks like you're spread a little too thin today. And she said, whatever. And I said, okay. I was like, no, no, I'm, you know, I'm just trying to commiserate with you here. And she goes, listen, I haven't had a day off since New Year's. And I go, well, that's not cool. That's not cool. I'm just here to pick up my trailer. And it was like pulling teeth every step of the way. She was just angry and upset. And uh, we finally get to the end and, and she's looking at my sweater and she goes, you know what? I wish I was Spider-Man. And I was like, yeah, uh-huh. And she's like, you know, but if I was Spider-Man, I'd be a bad Spider-Man. I'd be out robbing banks and stuff. And I was like, okay. And as soon as I finished up at the counter, her coworker walked in and she says, stop right there. I haven't had a cigarette since 5 a.m. And I'm gonna go smoke a cigarette mile. before Turn I deal right with you or throw myself off a bridge. <laughs> if I wasn't so funny, I would be like, like offended but it was freaking hilarious we're almost there all right guys i'm here at randy's man cave i just wanted to show you how cool this was the first thing i said when i walked in is how did you convince your wife to give you the whole garage what did you say about that randy um she has the house <laughs> <laughs> the wife gets the rest of the house yeah, you've been collecting a long time. Did you ever get any Amazing Fantasy 15s? Uh, yeah, in the 80s. I <laughs> you hear the anguish in his voice, guys. Yeah, I, so I was one of those guys, and in, in, I, I worked in comic book stores as a, as a kid, and the majority of it was bagging and boarding the books, pricing them and, and, and filing them, and then hanging up the posters, or every now and then they let me, if I was a good guy, uh, handle the register. But at the time when I was doing that in, in the 80s and in, in to the early 90s, um, the Silver Age books were inexpensive. I mean, you, you could walk into a comic book store and have a long box of Amazing Spider-Man, you know, I'm not, not a stack of number ones or anything, but you would be a legitimate, like from number 25 up. Right. And then if an Amazing Fantasy 15 came in, I remember the store owner was like, he literally said to me, oh, another one of these. <laughs> and and I, I, of course, I thought it was cool in the first appearance of Spider-Man, but they were so much more readily available. And they, of course, they, there was no CGC or CBCS or PGX or any of that. So nobody was grading. So you'd get a 4.0 copy and it would go on the wall for 250, 300 bucks. 250, 300 bucks for an AF-15. And mind you, this is 1985, 1986. Yeah, you know, at that point, Spider-Man had only been around for a little bit over twenty years. Show us a those two books that you showed me earlier, because I was mentioning on the drive up here that uh, I have no idea what was in these boxes. Well, I, I remember telling you I was I had like like thirteen, fourteen, fifteen long boxes of stuff, and you were like, eh, "Well, what do you have in there?" I said, "Majority of it's like bronze and copper, high grade stuff. It's all bagged and boarded." But um, you know, Web of Spider-Man. As long as it was... You know, Web of Spider-Man number one, new standard copy, you know, um, it, it's all going to be stuff like that. So there you go, guys. We're going we're gonna to do all right. I was, just, I was a little worried. I was like, man, I hope I didn't agree to 1700 bucks for a bunch of 90s stuff. No, <laughs> no, no. Yeah. It's, it's uh, a lot of Batman and Spider-Man and uh, 
you know, there's even a, a first Punisher in here from Zach and high grade. My stuff's all high grade, all bag and boarded, so you're not gonna have to spend any money on even to bag or board anything. It's all ready for you. Nice. Um, all right, guys, well, we're gonna get this loaded up. Amazing. I mean, just an incredible deal, an incredible guy. This is the type of deal that dealers dream about. Guy calls you up, first thing, first and foremost, he's cool to talk to, and it's a nice conversation on the phone. It's like, <sighs> then he throws out a price to you for his books that is so incredibly fair and good that you just say yes like you just don't even have to uh, go back and forth now the price that I paid on the slabs I think is absolutely fair 60% of fair market value it's a lot of work to move 350 slabs I think that was really fair but the raw books at a hundred bucks a, a long box from what I've seen in these raw in, in these raw books so far I'm feeling a little guilty about the hundred dollars a long box like my conscience is getting to me as I'm driving home I'm like man that is some really good stuff so I still don't know everything that's in there um, but I think you know we're gonna have to do something nice for Randy and his wife maybe a nice gift certificate to something um, we'll see what's actually in the boxes uh, I'll do a series of videos where we go through the boxes together I think will be a lot of fun so also what you saw what what you want to see when you're a dealer and you walk into a place is how the room is kept that room was immaculate everything was in the right place all the books are bagged and boarded and taped shut and what you couldn't see on camera is that it smelled amazing in there everything smelled clean and fresh and it's a big deal to me I'm weird about smells but sometimes you'll walk into a house like that time when I saw the collection that they wanted $40,000 so they needed to replace their roof and I walk into the house the roofs caving in it's damp they're all sitting there on the couch smoking cigarettes the books are in boxes they're not bagged or boarded I mean it makes a huge difference uh, that the place smells really good the place smelled nice so I'm just uh, over the moon totally excited can't think of of a better way to spend a Saturday um, and when we get home we'll go through some of these books So here we have Amazing Spider-Man number 135, the second appearance of the Punisher in a 9.0. Astonishing Tales number 25, the first appearance of Deathlock and the first George Perez work. Spectacular Spider-Man number 64 in a 9.6, origin and first appearance of the Cloak and Dagger. Saga of the Swamp Thing, number 20. Alan Moore's run on Swamp Thing begins. I pulled this one because Randy collected a lot of like first uh, works by notable artists like this one here. Uh, Frank Miller's run on Daredevil begins. Origin and Death of Deathstalker in a 9-2 white. And this one, the first Frank Miller Daredevil art in Spectacular Spider-Man, number 27. Iron Fist number one, story continued from Marvel premiere number 25, first solo uh, Iron Fist. Doctor Strange number one in a 9.2, first appearance of the Silver Dagger. Star Wars 42, uh, part four of The Empire Strikes Back, and the first comic book appearance of Boba Fett. He appeared in that magazine style first. Deadpool number one in a 9.8. DC Comics Presents 26, the first appearance of the new Teen Titans in preview, and the first appearance of Raven, Cyborg, and Starfire. Avengers 181 in a 9.6, the first appearance of Scott Lang. Sentry number one in a 9.6, first appearance of the Sentry. Spectacular Spider-Man number one in a 9.6, the second ongoing series for Spider-Man, two copies of that in a 9.6 white. G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, number one. 
in a 9.6. Godzilla number one in a 9.6. A ton of 9.6s in this collection. I think he probably thought, you know, the value was just so much better to get a nearly perfect book and the price is so much cheaper for a 9.6. Uh, Marvel Superheroes number 12, Origin and First Appearance of uh, Captain Marvel, uh, Marvel and the First Appearance of Urog and Una. Invaders number one from 1975. I just thought this was a really awesome cover. It's not, you know, often that this late uh, in the industry in 1975 that you're still getting, you know, swastika Nazi covers. Thought that was interesting. Marvel Superhero Secret Wars number 8, 9.6 white. Origin of the alien symbiote that eventually becomes Venom. X-Men 120, the first appearance of Alpha Flight in Cameo in a 9.2. Daredevil 168 in a 9.2 white newsstand edition. Origin and first appearance of Elektra. Detective Comics 523, the first cameo appearance of Killer Croc. Daredevil 183, this book's heating up right now, and a 9-6 newsstand, uh, Punisher versus Daredevil. Wolverine number one, limited series, first solo Wolverine comic, 9-6 white newsstand. ASM 252, 9.6 white pages, newsstand edition, ties with Marvel Team Up 141 for the first appearance of the black costume. ASM 299, Venom Cameo, they say. Sure does seem like a first full to me, but we'll go with Cameo. 96 white and 298 in a 9.6 white. The first Todd McFarlane Spider-Man. Batman the Dark Knight Returns, number one. First appearance of Carrie Kelly, 96 white. Classic Frank Miller art. The original art for this sold for millions of dollars recently. And here's X-Men 121, the first full appearance of Alpha Flight. One of those rare occurrences where the first full is worth less than the first cameo. X-Men 131 in a 9-2, first appearance of Dazzler. X-Men 221, the first appearance of Mr. Sinister. Tales of Teen Titans number 44, Dick Grayson becomes Nightwing in the first appearance of Jericho in the origin of Deathstroke. Marvel Spotlight 32 in a 9-2 white. Origin and first appearance of Spider-Woman. Amazing Spider-Man number 195. Origin and second appearance of the Black Cat in a 9-6. Tons of ASM uh, McFarlane run and stuff like that. That's I'm not going to show you here. That's going to go straight to whatnot. Marvel Spotlight number 6. Second appearance of Ghost Rider in a 9.0 white pages. Joker number one in a 9.4 off white to white CBCS. Punisher number one, 96 white, signed by Mike Zach, first Punisher in his own series. Howard the Duck number one in a 9.4 white. This book, I might need to crack this one out. There's a printer's crease, but that's really all I see with it. Here you can see um, right here is a printer's crease, which doesn't affect from the grade. Uh, and it's also on the back. Um, so I'm gonna have to pull the notes on that and see if that's a CPR candidate. Marvel Superheroes Contest of Champions number one. This is the first time I've ever actually owned this book. Nine, six white pages, first Marvel limited series, first appearance of Peregrine, Talisman, Collective Man, Blitzkrieg, Defensor, and Shamrock. So I, I'm not even sure what the value is on that off the top of my head. So I pulled that one aside. Web of Spider-Man one, 9.8 white. Lethal Protector 1, 9.8 white, first Venom in his own title. The Thing number 1, 9.8 white from 1983. Star Darth Vader number 1, first appearance of Black Kersantan, the movie variant cover. Darth uh, Star Wars Darth Vader number 6, I believe this is the first Cad Bane second print. Batman the Colt number 1 in a 9.8 white, just an awesome 1980s Batman square bound book. Batman and the Outsiders number 1 in a 9.8 white. Wonder Woman number 1, a classic George Perez cover. Moon Knight number one, sketch edition. Pulled this aside just to make sure it wasn't a high ratio incentive that's from 2006. Amazing Spider-Man number 32 in a 4.5, the second appearance of Dr. Kurt Connors. I pulled all of these out because I thought it was a really cool theme. Um, this is like horror 
late 60s, 1970s, horror number one. So we have Chamber of Darkness number one in an 80, Tower of Shadows number one in an 80 from 1969, Crypt of Shadows number one in a 92, Vault of Evil number one in a 9.2, Chamber of Chills number one in a 9.4, Weird Wonder Tales number one in a 9.2, and Phantom Stranger number one in an 8.5. So I thought that was cool. Number one, uh, you know, Bronze Age horror titles. Moon Knight Volume 2 number one in a 9.8, and Legends number six in 9.8, the first appearance of the new Justice League, and a Ronald Reagan appearance. On to some Batman keys, Batman 436, and there's tons of other Batman keys that I'm not gonna show in this video that are gonna go straight to whatnot. Origin of Robin, Dick Grayson retold, and the first appearance of Tim Drake. Batman 441 in a 9.8. Batman 574 in a 9.8. 575 in a 9.8. 373, 9.8. 442 in a 9.8. And then some older stuff, uh, Batman 203 in a 7.0, 80 page Giants. Batman, Batman 169 in a 3.5, second Silver Age Penguin appearance. And 159 in a 3.5. 131, a 10 center from 1960. And 136, another 10 center from 1960. Uh, Captain America 109 in an 8.0, Origin of Cap Retold, Tales of Suspense 63, First Silver Age Origin of Captain America, Tales of Suspense 59, the first solo Captain America story since the 1950s. Back to some Batman uh, 368, Jason Todd officially becomes the second Robin, Green Arrow number one in the 9.8, just a cool 1980s square bound book. Special Marvel Edition number 16, the first appearance in Death of Midnight and the second appearance of Shang-Chi. Fear number 20, first published Paul Gulacy work and Morbius the Living Vampire Begins. Justice League number 50, the variant cover in a 9-8. X-Force number two, second appearance of Deadpool and the first appearance of Weapon X, 9.8. Marvel Super Heroes 13, the first appearance of Carol Danvers, and Captain Marvel number one in a 6.5 from 1968. Miracle Man number one in a 9.6. Destroyer Duck number one, the first appearance of Gru the Wanderer, and the origin and first appearance of Destroyer Duck. And Punisher War Journal number one in a 9.8. I was surprised how many people commented on previous videos about how important this run was in this book in particular um, for their collecting journey. Moon Knight number one, the first appearance of Raoul Bushman, part one of the origin of Moon Knight. Batman Killing Joke, CBCS 9.8. Batman number one, uh, this is just a really cool Michael Turner Aspen Comics variant that I hadn't seen. G.I. Joe Special Missions number one in a 9.8. Brave and the Bold 59. Uh, first Batman team-up in Brave and the Bold, and a really cool color scheme on this one. Batman 440 in a 9.8, awesome George Perez cover. Batman 374 in a 9.8, 408. I just always think any, you know, Bronze Age Batman in a 9.8 is cool and worth looking at. Batman 532, the glow-in-the-dark edition. Batman 530 Glow in the Dark Edition. This must be some of the first Glow in the Dark covers from 1996, I guess. Yeah, early 90s is when that started. Batman 608, 9.8. Batman 400, I love this Bill Sienkiewicz cover, 9.6, white page, thick book. And Crisis on Infinite Earth, number one. First appearance of the Blue Beetle and Detective Carp in DC Comics. So as for the rest of the slabs, it's all of this stuff here and all of these. Um, these are gonna go directly to whatnot and some really cool stuff 
in here as well. Um, so you'll definitely want to give me a follow over on whatnot if you're not already. Tons of stuff. I mean, it just goes on and on. Every single show, we have uh, your chance at $500 in cash. This entire box right here is all Todd McFarlane Spider-Man. So, I mean, it's going to be some really cool shows. I'm sure some people are going to get some really good deals um, on some of this stuff over on One Not. Everything starts at $1, and I hope to see you there. So here is the long boxes. So it's actually two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13 long boxes, three short boxes, and then this short box here. This is like special um, size, pocket size books. I really like this cover here on this one. He said some of these go for like uh, 20 to 40 bucks, but some pocket size ones. And here, there's just some awesome stuff in here. I mean, if you just take a look at this, here's um, some high grade detective comics, Batman uh, 100 page specials. Um, there's some really good stuff in here so far, just from what I've looked like um, all those hot new Batman keys. And stay tuned for a future video as we flip through some of these uh, boxes together and just d uncover what's in here. I have, I have no idea what's in here other than just seeing, you know, the tops right here that's just decent stuff. So those will be some fun videos. All right, so that's it, guys. Um, a ton of work to do. We got a lot of stuff to get listed on the site, a lot of stuff uh, to get prepped over here for whatnot. Uh, it's a lot of work, but it's the best kind of work. I couldn't be uh, happier to uh, have this as a task. Thanks once again to Randy for uh, making such a smooth deal, such an awesome transaction. Really appreciate you, Randy. And uh, thank you guys for sticking with me to the end of the video. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like for your chance to win a free slab and head over to brycecomics.com. Use code COLLECT10 for 10% off. Um, lots of the slabs that you saw here in this video will be available um, and of course over on whatnot to snag some of these good deals on these awesome slabs it's going to be so cool to have you know 300 slabs or so to get through on whatnot all bronze age desirable stuff um, it's going to be a ton of fun thanks as always and we'll catch you in the next video bye Bryce comics